So as promised, this is the first of many views, angles, of the threading system of the BVU-800. I've been working on machines for, uh, videotape machines, for over 20 years, and though I have not by any means seen every kind that has ever been made, uh, this one has the most complex threading system of any machine I've ever seen. It uses a three-stage threading system first stage is this arm right here. You can hear the machine complaining when I move this. It's hard to see but there is a guide roller right here that my index finger is pointing at. You can't see that. Um, this roller is actually what pulls the tape out of the cassette to thread it. This roller here actually ends up jammed into this V-shaped guide right here. That is the end of stage one. Stage two of the threading mechanism involves this white piece of plastic that you see here. Um, blocking the light by doing that. Let's see. I can... Uh, yeah, you can about see the... Right here is, is the actual guide that's used in stage two threading. So first it's pulled by this roller, then the tape is literally transferred to this roller. So it pulls out a loop, and inside the loop, this roller comes up, or it's not a roller, it's a guide, um, and then this right here is what's called the threading slider. It's essentially a little car that rides on a track and comes all the way around to here. Once it's there, the rest of the the rest of the rollers that are mounting on mounted on stage three will take over. And stage three is comprised of the rollers that are on this black plastic threading ring here. So this and this and this and this, as well as the pinch roller here. This is actually where the pinch roller starts out. The pinch roller will end up coming almost 360 degrees, probably about 320 degrees, all the way around till it gets to this right. This right here is the top support for the bearing of the capstan. This machine currently has an issue. The issue uh, well, several issues with the threading system. I noticed that the speed of the threading system is somewhat erratic. Sometimes it threads fast other times it threads slow. I suspect that this has something to do with the motor or the motor's control system. It could be a worn out motor, but also it could be that this thing needs new grease. Sometimes it encounters more resistance than others. The most pressing issue in this threading system right here at the moment is regarding the position of this guide right here. It's, it's rather hard to see, but I will provide another angle showing this problem. This guide right here is, you can see next to it, there's a piece of black plastic right here. And this guide is sticking up way too far. It is supposed to rest, come to a final resting point that is more like that. You can see the motion of this white plastic arm as I do that. It should be like this, but it's actually stopping like this. Now, if this were to rise up, any higher at all, the threading, arm, the first stage threading arm would actually hang up and catch, literally crash into this part of the mechanism. So the service manual, as they show, it's very important to make sure that the resting place uh, of all of the parts is within specification. So one of the goals in this series is going to be rebuilding almost the entire threading mechanism except for much of um, stage one. Stage one is in very good condition on this machine and as taking it apart and rebuilding it entirely is an extremely complicated process. It will be skipped or at least put to the last. As I take apart the system it will be I will be able to run this manually and I will be able to feel for resistance points in the cycle and figure out what I need to do from there.
So without further ado, here is the threading cycle from cassette completely out all the way up to fully threaded with the pinch roller not yet engaged. Cassette, stage one, stage two, stage three, fully threaded. Now we'll go ahead and engage the pinch roller. And now we'll begin tape run. The tape run itself is actually looking good. Of also of note, I'm gonna stop. Uh, it is somewhat difficult to see, but not impossible. Again, here is the stage two white threading arm that I was moving before. And you can just about make out the roller here. You can see I'm covering it with my finger there. Now, this roller, or not, not roller, but a guide, uh, it is actually coming into contact with the outer return loop of tape. And it's not supposed to be doing that. Instead of being where it is, it's supposed to be like that. So both the starting and resting position of the threading slider, as it is called in the service manual, uh, need to be altered and adjusted. And in this series, we're going to be going over exactly how to do that. So now I'm going to show the unthreading of this machine. Stage three, two, one. Cassette. And there you have it. Here it is one more time. One, two, three. Threaded. controller and tape run. I'm going to jump right into eject. The way these mechanisms are driven, uh, they are driven entirely by the threading motor, which is it's hard to now this bit of metal, uh, there's a capacitor right here that I've got my finger on. This is the actual threading motor right here. Um, that drives all three threading stages. Uh, obviously there's a very complex mechanical linkage between them all. Um, so stage one, at first is the, uh, there's actually a uh, an engagement or a transmission of sorts. So first when this motor runs it moves uh, threading stage one only. Once threading stage one reaches completion the transmission switches to begin turning this black plastic threading ring. So the plastic threading ring will will turn and move all of its guides. However, none of those guides come into to position where they affect the tape until this is moved all the way until the threading slider stage two is all the way in its final resting position. So at the beginning of stage two threading, all of the guides, except for the one here, that thread are moving. However, none of stage three guides come into contact with the tape until the threading slider reaches its final resting position. So once the threading slider reaches its final position, this cam here actually, re actually releases the threading slider from the ring, from the threading ring, such that the threading ring can continue to turn 
while the threading slider itself is at its final resting point. And then when the whole process reverses, this cam will once again engage and catch the threading slider and move it in turn. This tape system com comprises something like 25 or 26 actual tape bearing surfaces, which from a certain standpoint is kind of nuts. I've, I do not know of any other machine that, once again, that I don't know of any other machine, I've never seen one, that, uh, although they probably do exist, uh, I've never seen a machine that has 25 or more tape bearing surfaces. So that will end this particular segment. There will be other views inserted into this segment um, that show additional angles of fully automatic tape threading. And then I'm also going to go back and with the mechanism partly disassembled, I'm going to mess with the engagement such that I can turn the whole threading system by hand. And that way I, uh, I can zoom in and show the actual individual mechanisms as they in turn come into use.